Hi everyone, this is Laylee with another Inominatus video guide. This video will outline the strategy for Warmaster Blackhorn, the sixth boss in the Dragon Soul raid. Warmaster Blackhorn can be found on the Skyfire, the Alliance ship seen in the gunship battle in the Ice Crown Citadel raid. Your raid will board the ship at the top of Wormrest Temple. To start the encounter, your raid must first talk to Sky Captain Swayze to set the ship into the air, and then talk to him again to start the encounter. Warmaster Blackhorn is a two-phase fight where your raid must first fight waves of adds in Phase 1, and then deal with Warmaster Blackhorn in Phase 2. This fight will require your DPS to split between all of the adds, and handle certain damage mechanics to down this boss. Your raid will need two tanks, two to three healers, and five to six DPS. You will need two tanks to handle the different adds that spawn, plus the abilities used by Blackhorn. If your DPS is strong, your raid may consider using three healers to combat the damage dealt on this fight. Otherwise, your raid might need 6 DPS in order to handle the adds in Phase 1. I will first cover the abilities used in this fight, and then outline the strategy for defeating this encounter. Phase 1 Warmaster Blackhorn flies above the Skyfire on his Dragon Mount Goriona. He summons adds to fight your raid. The first phase involves the ship itself as a mechanic of the fight. The Skyfire has a health bar just like it did in Ice Crown Citadel. It is your raid's job to keep the ship alive long enough to bring Blackhorn onto the deck of the ship. The Skyfire has two harpoon guns that will periodically harpoon two Twilight Assault Drakes and bring them close to the ship in order for the DPS to kill them. These harpoons will fire, bring the adds close to the ship, and hold them for a short time. The guns will release the Drakes and then need to reload before harpooning the Drakes again. Twilight Assault Drakes will drop off three pairs of adds during the course of Phase 1 and will use Twilight Barrage on the ship. Both Drakes will use Twilight Barrage when they are not harpooned. Likewise, Goriona will fire a large purple fireball called Twilight Onslaught onto the deck of the Skyfire. One of the adds dropped off by the Twilight Drakes is the Twilight Elite Dreadblade. This ad will use two abilities. The first ability is called Blade Rush, which charges a random player and deals physical damage to any players in his path. The second ability is called Degeneration. This is a debuff that deals damage to enemies in a frontal cone and a shadow damage dot, which stacks on the tank. The other ad that is dropped off by the Twilight Drakes is the Twilight Elite Slayer. This ad must be picked up by the other tank. It also shares the Blade Rush ability with the Twilight Elite Dreadblade. The other ability this ad has is Brutal Strike. Like Degeneration, it deals physical damage and has a dot that stacks on the tank. The last ad that appears is the Twilight Sapper with 341,000 health. These ads will stealth immediately on landing and will head towards the bridge of the ship. Your raid must kill the Sapper before it reaches the bridge and uses Detonate. Detonate will cause the Sapper to explode, dealing massive fire damage to all nearby players and the Skyfire. Phase 2 Once these three waves of adds are killed, Warmaster Blackhorn will dismount and land on the deck of the ship. Blackhorn will use Devastate on your tanks, which deals damage and reduces the player's armor for 30 seconds. This effect stacks. He will also use Disrupting Roar. This ability deals moderate physical damage to all players and interrupts spellcasting of all nearby players for 8 seconds. Blackhorn will use Shockwave, which deals massive physical damage to players in a wide frontal cone and stuns them for 4 seconds. This ability can target any player in your raid. His last ability is Vengeance, which causes Blackhorn to inflict more damage for each percentage of health he is missing. Vengeance applies to all of Blackhorn's attacks and abilities. Goriona will continue to attack the ship as well. She will use Twilight Flames, which shoots a blast of dark energy at a random player. This blast deals moderate shadow damage to that player and all nearby players. Twilight Flames will also leave a patch of flames on the ground, dealing shadow damage every second for 30 seconds. Now that all of the abilities have been shown, I will outline the strategy for this encounter. Encounter Strategy Your raid must talk to Sky Captain Swayze to start the encounter. There will be some in-game dialogue before the first set of adds arrive. Your ranged DPS can and should DPS the Twilight Drakes as they approach the ship to maximize DPS. Your DPS will need to split evenly between the adds during Phase 1. With a mixed raid group, your raid should assign 2 melee DPS to the Dreadblades and Slayers, 2 ranged DPS to the Twilight Drakes, 
and 1 to 2 DPS to float between the adds. All DPS need to focus on the sappers when they appear. While DPSing the adds, your raid will also need to deal with the Twilight Barrage and Twilight Onslaught abilities. To handle these abilities, your raid should spread out around the ship. Our raid uses the four corners of the boat to split the raid into two to three person teams. Each team is responsible for standing in the Twilight Barrages when they are near the team to minimize the damage the ship takes. This positioning also makes it easier to dodge the Blade Rush ability from the two melee adds. Blade Rush can also apply the dot effects to players hit by the charge, so raiders should make sure they are not getting hit by this ability. When Goriona uses Twilight Onslaught, your raid will have about 6 seconds to stack up in the purple swirl. A raid cooldown should be used to minimize the damage that this ability does. It is important to note that anyone with less than 80,000 health should avoid standing in Twilight Onslaught or use a personal cooldown to survive as this ability can be lethal to low health targets. Your raid should quickly spread out again after Twilight Onslaught is hit to avoid Blade Rush. The combination of these two abilities can be deadly if Blade Rush is not dodged. When the Harpoon Guns bring in the Twilight Drakes, have your ranged DPS focus these adds. Since they are out of caster range while they use Twilight Barrage, they should be focused when they are near the ship. When the Sappers land on the deck, they will put out a small red smoke cloud. This will put the Sapper into stealth. To remove them from stealth, have someone with a targeted AoE damage or slow ability target the area between the smoke cloud and the bridge of the ship. This will bring the sapper out of stealth. Your DPS must focus the sapper and kill it before it reaches the bridge and explodes. Any slows or stuns should be used. It is important to note that death grip does work on the sappers and should be used if your raid has a death knight. When the first set of melee adds dies, your tank should swap the targets they are tanking. The reason for this is because your tanks will likely still have degeneration and brutal strike stacked on them. By tanking the other add, their initial dot stacks will drop while the new ones stack up. This will minimize the damage your tanks receive. Once all three waves of adds are dead, Blackhorn will land on the ship and start phase 2. Blackhorn should be tanked in the center of the deck. All melee should spread out behind Blackhorn while the ranged and healers should spread out more than 10 yards away in a circle. This positioning will minimize the number of people targeted by Shockwave and reduce the distance they need to run in order to avoid it. Your ranged DPS should focus Goriona at the start of Phase 2. Goriona has about 13 million health and will fly away after being dealt about 10 million damage. Otherwise, Twilight Flames will quickly fill up the deck of the Skyfire and will cause issues with positioning and healing throughout the phase. Your ranged may have to move closer to Goriona in order to DPS her, but they should stay spread out to avoid Shockwave. After Goriona flies away, your ranged DPS should switch to Blackhorn. Your tanks will want to taunt swap after three Devastate stacks so that their armor does not get so low that they can be one-shot at High Vengeance. Shockwave will periodically target a random raid member. Anyone standing in the frontal cone must move immediately to dodge this. While taking this damage at the start of Phase 2 may be survivable, it will become lethal as Blackhorn gains vengeance. Shockwave has a 2 second cast time, so your raiders will need to move quickly. Make sure your ranged DPS and healers stand as close to Blackhorn as they can while staying outside of 10 yards. Blackhorn will use Disrupting Roar throughout this phase. Because of this, it is important that no casters within 10 yards of Blackhorn, otherwise they will be silenced for 8 seconds. The raid damage will increase as the fight goes on, so Disrupting Roar will be hitting for about 100,000 damage near the end of the fight. When Blackhorn reaches 40%, he will be hitting 60% harder with all of his attacks and abilities. Heroism should be used at this point and your tanks need to use personal cooldowns to survive the incoming damage. Blackhorn is a challenging fight that requires good DPS communication and high movement on the part of your raid. Once your raid sees the mechanics and understands the priority of adds in Phase 1, Blackhorn will be defeated. Please click the annotation above to see the fight with all the abilities and strategies outlined in its entirety. Put on your Sunday dresses and have fun.